Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. Have you made a transaction since January 6th of 2021 using terms like MAGA or Trump? Maybe you bought merchandise like a red MAGA hat from President Trump or at a conservative political convention where those terms might show up in the transaction. Or how about if your purchase included terms like Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, Dick's Sporting Goods, or even just the Bible itself? That is what federal agents ask banks to look for and then to hand over to them that data about you. Chairman Jim Jordan of the House Judiciary Committee is demanding answers about this in a new letter he sent to Noah Bishoff. That is the former director of the Office of Stakeholder Integration and Engagement in the Strategic Operations Division of the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, also known as FinCEN. Financial institutions are able to collect some of this data by looking at merchant category codes. You may remember that such codes have caused scandal within the gun rights community because it allows banks to track those codes to see who's buying what type of gun and ammunition, meaning that the government has yet another backdoor way to create an illegal gun registry. As we know, criminals are illegally buying, selling, and st stealing guns on the streets with nary a peep nor ounce of concern from Soros-backed DAs. They ain't buying from Bass Pro Shops. That's where law-abiding conservatives are going shopping instead. Chairman Jordan is now asking Bishoff to appear for a transcribed interview over the matter. But more interesting for our purposes here tonight is how these government agencies came to be arrayed against the very people they were designed to protect. My next guest tonight has written an entire book explaining just that. Joining us now to discuss is Dr. J. Michael Waller, a senior analyst for strategy at the Center for Security Policy. He's the author of the new book, Big Intel, how the CIA and FBI went from Cold War heroes to deep state villains, which was just released this week. Dr. Waller, thanks for being back tonight. Kara, it's great to be back with you. Great. So you write the very agencies responsible for defending our country against foreign influence and subversion adopted that hostile doctrine designed to undermine us from within. So I know there's so much that goes into this, but in a nutshell, when did this problem start with our intel agencies? Well, the problem really started when the uh, colleges were dumping their graduates into the intelligence community and, and FBI and law enforcement, Justice Department. Uh, these liberal uh, you know, law schools were doing it for decades anyway, but when they went woke, they produced woke graduates who went into the system. And these people went in and populated the system so that after George W. Bush centralized our intelligence apparatus after 9-11 to fight terrorism, he didn't realize it at the time, but his successor would use that centralization to impose cultural Marxism from above and pull those radicals up throughout the bureaucracies. And you also kind of trace some of the, the lineage of these ideologies, Marxism, DEI, wokeism, cultural Marxism, whatever terms you'd like to use. A lot of us kind of think it just appeared out of nowhere, right, in the last 10 or so years. Some may say it goes back to the 80s or the 60s, but you say it goes back perhaps even more like a century to some of what the Soviets were doing and what some of their sympathizers, agents, and the rest were bringing over to the U.S. Can you talk about that aspect as well? Yeah, it began a hundred years ago, actually, at a meeting in Moscow in 1922, where the head of the founder of the KGB, the Cheka, and leaders of the Communist International, which was brand new, it was Lenin's uh, network to, to spread communism around the world, they, they had a meeting where they decided to set up what became the Frankfurt School in Germany, thinking violent Bolshevik revolution is just not going to happen in industrialized democracies. We have to subvert their culture, destroy their cultures from within, destroy their beliefs in family and values and religion and morality and everything else that's good, and, and to wreck it so that the communists can then step in and, and people will be prepared to accept their ideas. That's precisely what happened. They wanted to, to do this to rip apart Germany after World War I to just tear out the political center and then turn Germany communist, but Hitler went and beat them to the punch. So what happened? The United States naively brought these re communist agent refugees into the United States, mainly to Columbia University and elsewhere. This was negotiated with Soviet military intelligence to, to have them set up the Frankfurt School in New York City and to educate the educators and to spread this far and wide. And this is where cultural Marxism was developed. 